Jesus? Is that you? God, who is it? Is that Jesus Christ? Please. Is that Jesus? The strangest things have indeed been seen in the sky. In recent years, an increasing number of people around the world have reported witnessing strange and mysterious phenomena in the skies. From inexplicable lights and unusual cloud formations to enigmatic figures and celestial apparitions, these sightings have captivated the public's imagination and sparked a wave of speculation and debate. Among the most compelling and widely discussed of these occurrences are those that some believe to be visions of Jesus Christ himself. These extraordinary events have led many to wonder if they are witnessing signs from above, heralding a divine message or even the imminent return of Christ as foretold in biblical prophecy. Is it possible that these extraordinary visions divine interventions or are they simply the result of natural phenomena and the power of human perception? Join us as we examine the evidence and consider the profound question. Is that Jesus in the sky? Is that Jesus Christ? Please, please, our Father God. In recent times, videos and eyewitness accounts have emerged of peculiar Jesus-like figures appearing in the sky stirring intense speculation about the possibility of his return. These sightings captivate the imagination and resonate deeply with those holding strong religious convictions. The phenomena prompt profound questions. Are these divine manifestations heralding a significant spiritual event, illusions crafted by atmospheric conditions, or even sophisticated hoaxes exploiting modern technology? As these enigmatic appearances continue to be documented, they challenge us to explore the complex interplay between faith, perception, and the mysteries of our natural and technological world. Is that Jesus? It's the question of people when they see strange things in the sky. What do you think about this? Uh, it's so difficult to confirm that it's Jesus. But let's discuss how likely that prediction is to be correct. Now, it is the end of the last days. Many brothers and sisters who truly believe in the Lord and wait for His return must have such questions. The Lord Jesus has said, And behold, I come quickly. Revelation 22.12 He has promised us to return. So has He come back yet? How can we know whether He has returned or not? One of the signs of the Lord's return is that disasters will occur all over the world. Just as Matthew 24, 6, 8 says, And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. In recent years, disasters have gotten worse and worse all over the world. Earthquakes, wildfires, famines and plagues occur frequently and are widespread. The world is in a state of constant upheaval and turmoil, with wars, violence and terrorist attacks on the rise. For example, the coronavirus infected pneumonia, which occurred in Wuhan, China at the end of 2019, has spread to many countries around the world causing a serious situation. The United States saw an outbreak of a deadly flu, which resulted in many deaths. Australia's bushfires have lasted for several months since September 2019, causing significant damage and loss. East Africa suffered its worst invasion of desert locusts in 25 years, which led to a food crisis in many African nations. In November 2019, the worst flood in 50 years hit Venice, Italy, with 80% of the city flooded. At the beginning of 2020, a blizzard rarely seen in a century struck Newfoundland, Canada. Torrential rains flooded Indonesia. There were also earthquakes in the Kuril Islands, in Elazig, Turkey, in the Caribbean near Cuba, and in other places, 
Matthew 24, 12 records, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Nowadays, in all religions and denominations, believers in general lust for worldly things and take no thought to working for the Lord. Some of them are engaged in business, and some run factories and are busy with making money. Moreover, some pastors and elders scheme against one another and have jealous disputes with each other. They even form factions, separate into their own cliques, steal offerings, and commit adultery. Followers become colder and colder in their faith and love, and churches are becoming more and more desolate now. The Return of Israel Matthew 24, 32, 33 say, Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When its branch is yet tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So likewise you, when you shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Luke 21, 29, 32 record. And he spoke to them a parable. Behold the fig tree and all the trees. When they now shoot forth, you see and know of your own selves that summer is now near at hand. So likewise, you, when you see these things come to pass, know that the kingdom of God is near at hand. Truly I say to you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. In May 1948, Israel was restored. Shortly after David Ben-Gurion announced the establishment of Israel in Tel Aviv on May 14, 1948, the Soviet Union recognized it quickly and set up an embassy there on May 26, and later supported Israel in many ways. On May 11, 1949, Israel was accepted officially as a member of the United Nations with the support of the Soviet Union and the United States. Matthew 24, 29 says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Astronomers frequently publish news of stars falling, new stars appearing, and regular sight of meteor crashes. At 9.15 a.m. on February 15, 2013, Chelyabinsk, Ural's federal region, Russia, was hit by an asteroid, and a huge shockwave and explosion caused 1,491 people injured and plenty of glass broken. It was said by scientists that the diameter of the asteroid was about 15 meters and that it weighed about 7,000 metric tons. This has fulfilled the prophecy, the stars shall fall from heaven. On May 17, 2016, a meteor streaked across the New England sky, turning night into daylight. In January 2018, a super-blue blood moon occurred in the sky. Prior to this, a series of blood moons had appeared. All this has fulfilled the prophecy, fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. The gospel shall be preached to the ends of the earth. Matthew 24, 14 records. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness to all nations, and then shall the end come. And this gospel shall be preached in all the world means when all nations have heard the gospel of the Lord, he will return. After the Lord Jesus completed the work of redemption through his crucifixion, the Holy Spirit began to guide God's chosen people to testify to the Lord Jesus. Through radio, the internet, books, gospel flyers, evangelism, and so on, the Lord's gospel has been spread more and more widely and finally preached among all nations. Christians have also already been throughout the world, and some, even many people, accept the gospel of the Lord Jesus in China, which is ruled by an atheist political party. The gospel of the Lord Jesus' redemption has spread to the ends of the universe. Dear brothers and sisters, just think about this. What nation and what region in the world now has never heard the gospel of the Lord Jesus? False Christs will appear. Matthew 24, 23, 26 say, 
then if any man shall say to you, See, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, so that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Why, if they shall say to you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth, behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. As we know, deception from false Christ has now occurred in the religious communities of many countries. For example, in South Korea, many are deceived into following false Christ due to a lack of discernment. All false Christ can do is to perform some simple signs and wonders and preach some specious fallacies to deceive others. They simply can't express the truth to resolve man's problem of committing sins and then confessing, nor can they save mankind from corruption. According to the prophecies of the Bible, when the Lord Jesus returns to do His work, there will inevitably be many false Christs and deceivers who will appear at the same time trailing and disturbing God's work. Therefore, when false Christs appear, God has actually already returned and arrived in secret. It's just that we don't know it. The facts above are enough to show us that the biblical prophecies of the Lord's return have basically come true, from which we know the Lord has already come back. Many people, however, will surely ask, Since the Lord has come back, why haven't we welcomed Him? Have you ever thought that there could be some deviations in welcoming the return of the Lord? Regarding the return of the Lord, many people take guarding against false Christs as their number one priority. They think any preaching that says the Lord has come is false and they don't seek how to be wise virgins and welcome the Lord's return. The Lord Jesus has prophesied, I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when He, the Spirit of truth, is come, He will guide you into all truth, for He shall not speak of Himself, but whatever He shall hear, that shall He speak, and He will show you things to come. John 16, 12, 13. In Revelation, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches is mentioned many times, and Revelation also prophecies, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Revelation 3.20 These prophecies show that when the Lord returns, he shall yet speak more words. Therefore, if we wish to welcome the Lord's appearance and work, we must seek God's voice. If we hear a particular church testifying that the Lord has returned and uttered new words, we should seek humbly. And if we recognize God's voice, we should waste no time in accepting it. This way, we won't miss the opportunity to welcome the Lord's coming. We are living in unprecedented times. The world is facing a global pandemic, wars, famines, earthquakes, and other natural disasters. Many people are fearful and anxious about the future, but we, as the Church of Jesus Christ, are not shaken by these things. We are not a church that is shaken with fear. We are not a church that wants to stand back and go hide in a bunker or store up as much as she can for when the tough times come. No. We are a church of Jesus Christ who understands our time here is short. And so, while we are here, we live on purpose. Jesus said in Matthew 24, 14, And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. Do you know that right now, through the internet, through social media, through satellite TV, through radio, through podcasts, through books, through magazines, through every possible medium, the gospel of Jesus Christ is being preached to every nation on earth. Do you know that right now there are people in places where it is illegal or dangerous to be a Christian who are hearing the good news of Jesus Christ and responding with faith and repentance? Do you know that right now there are people from every tribe and tongue and language and people group who are worshipping Jesus as their Lord and Saviour. This is amazing. 
This is fulfilling the prophecy of Jesus. This is what he said would happen before he comes back. And he is coming back soon. He is coming back for his bride, his church, his people. And he wants us to be ready. He wants us to be faithful. He wants us to be fruitful. The anticipation of Jesus' return, a core tenet of Christian eschatology, has profoundly influenced theology, culture, and societal behavior for nearly two millennia. The belief in the Second Coming is rooted in numerous biblical passages, such as those in the New Testament, where Jesus promises his disciples that he will return to bring about the fulfillment of God's kingdom. This expectation shapes the lives of believers, fostering a sense of hope and purpose and encouraging ethical and moral living in anticipation of divine judgment and eternal life. However, the specifics of this event, its timing, manner, and implications, remain subjects of intense theological debate and interpretation. Over centuries, Various denominations and theologians have offered diverse perspectives, ranging from literal interpretations of apocalyptic literature to more symbolic or metaphorical understandings of eschatological promises. The early Christian communities, living under Roman rule, anticipated an imminent return of Christ, which they believed would vindicate their faith and inaugurate a new era of peace and justice. This urgency is reflected in the writings of Paul and other early Christian texts, which exhort believers to remain vigilant and faithful. As time passed without the anticipated return, theological interpretations evolved. The delay, or what theologians term the Perugia delay, led to more nuanced understandings of eschatology. Some traditions, such as the Roman Catholic and Orthodox churches, emphasize the importance of living a life of grace and virtue, focusing on the sacraments and the church's teachings as a preparation for Christ's eventual return. Protestant denominations, particularly those influenced by millenarianism and dispensationalism, often stress the literal fulfillment of biblical prophecies, including signs and events that precede the Second Coming. Throughout history, periods of social upheaval, natural disasters, and moral crises have often sparked renewed interest in eschatological themes. For instance, during the Black Death in the 14th century, many believed the end times were near, interpreting the plague as a divine punishment and a sign of Christ's impending return. Similarly, in modern times, events such as wars, pandemics, and environmental crises often lead to increased speculation about the end times. This phenomenon is not limited to Christianity. Many religious traditions have eschatological elements that are reinterpreted in response to contemporary challenges. The 19th and 20th centuries witnessed a proliferation of new religious movements and eschatological interpretations, partly fueled by rapid social and technological changes. Movements such as the Millerites, who later influenced Seventh-day Adventism, predicted specific dates for Christ's return, leading to the great disappointment when those dates passed without incident. Despite these setbacks, the underlying belief in an imminent return remained strong, demonstrating the resilience and adaptability of eschatological faith. In contemporary times, the proliferation of media and digital communication has amplified and diversified discussions about the Second Coming. Television evangelists, online forums, and social media platforms provide venues for disseminating various eschatological interpretations and predictions. This digital age has also seen the rise of doomsday preppers and survivalist communities who often link their preparations to biblical prophecies. The accessibility of information and the ability to connect with like-minded individuals globally have democratized eschatological discourse, allowing for a wider range of voices and interpretations to be heard. Scientific advancements and the exploration of the cosmos have also influenced modern eschatology. The possibility of asteroids, 
climate change and other global threats provide a secular context for apocalyptic thinking, sometimes blending with religious narratives. This intersection of science and religion can lead to unique eschatological perspectives, where divine intervention and natural processes are seen as intertwined in the unfolding of end-time events. Critics of eschatological beliefs often argue that an excessive focus on the end times can lead to fatalism or disengagement from pressing social and environmental issues. They contend that waiting for divine intervention can sometimes detract from efforts to address injustice, poverty, and ecological degradation. However, proponents of eschatological faith argue that the hope and moral imperatives derived from these beliefs can inspire positive action and a sense of global responsibility. For many, the anticipation of Jesus' return is not merely about the end of the world, but about the transformation and redemption of creation, motivating them to work towards a more just and compassionate world. The belief in Jesus' return continues to be a dynamic and influential aspect of Christian theology and practice. It embodies a tension between the already and the not yet, the present reality of faith, and the future fulfillment of divine promises. This eschatological hope shapes not only individual lives, but also communities and societies, influencing how believers perceive their place in history and their responsibilities towards the world. Whether interpreted literally, symbolically, or somewhere in between, the anticipation of the Second Coming remains a powerful force in the spiritual landscape, inspiring both profound devotion and critical reflection on the nature of faith, hope, and the ultimate destiny of humanity. Unusual sightings in the sky over Jerusalem have ignited fervent debates and questions, with many believing them to be divine signs heralding the return of Jesus Christ. This ancient city, a focal point for three major religions, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, has long been considered a spiritual epicenter, making it a potent setting for apocalyptic and eschatological expectations. In recent years, reports of strange lights, ethereal figures, and inexplicable aerial phenomena have captured public imagination and media attention, stirring discussions about their significance and potential implications. Jerusalem's rich tapestry of religious significance provides fertile ground for interpreting these sightings as divine messages. For Christians, the belief in the second coming of Jesus is deeply ingrained in theology and scripture, particularly in the New Testament, where numerous passages foretell signs in the heavens preceding Christ's return. The Gospel of Matthew, for instance, speaks of celestial disturbances as harbingers of the end times. Immediately after the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, the stars will fall from the sky, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. Matthew 24, 29. Thus, for many believers, unusual aerial phenomena over Jerusalem are seen not as mere coincidences, but as fulfillment of biblical prophecy. These sightings have varied widely, ranging from mysterious lights moving in non-linear patterns to formations resembling angelic figures or crosses. Eyewitnesses often describe feelings of awe and spiritual awakening upon witnessing such events, interpreting them as signs of divine presence and imminent intervention. Social media and news outlets amplify these experiences, rapidly disseminating images and videos that fuel further speculation and debate. The widespread accessibility of these platforms allows individual testimonies to reach a global audience, creating a collective narrative that reinforces the belief in these sightings as prophetic. However, interpreting these phenomena as signs of the Second Coming is not without its challenges and controversies. Skeptics argue that many of these sightings can be attributed to natural or man-made causes. 
atmospheric phenomena such as pahelia, sun dogs, lenticular clouds, or even light pollution can create unusual visual effects that might be mistaken for supernatural events. Additionally, advancements in technology, particularly in the field of drones and holography, can produce convincing aerial displays that could easily be misinterpreted by observers. This technological angle introduces the possibility of hoaxes or deliberate deceptions aimed at exploiting religious sensitivities for various purposes. Moreover, the psychological aspect of such sightings cannot be overlooked. The phenomenon of pareidolia, where the human brain perceives familiar patterns or figures in random stimuli, plays a significant role in these interpretations. In a city like Jerusalem, with its profound spiritual and historical resonance, the collective psyche is primed to find meaning in the extraordinary, often interpreting ambiguous stimuli as significant religious signs. This psychological predisposition, coupled with the emotional and spiritual expectations of believers, creates a potent environment for perceiving and validating such phenomena as divine messages. The broader implications of these sightings and their interpretations are profound, influencing both individual and collective behavior. For some believers, these events reinforce their faith and urgency in spiritual preparedness, leading to increased religious observance, communal gatherings, and evangelism. Churches and religious leaders often find themselves addressing these phenomena in sermons and teachings, either endorsing the view that these are signs of the end times or cautioning against premature conclusions. Theological debates intensify as scholars and clerics delve into scriptural exegesis and historical precedents to provide context and guidance to their congregations. In addition to the religious and psychological dimensions, these sightings also intersect with political and cultural dynamics. Jerusalem's status as a contested city with ongoing geopolitical tensions adds another layer of significance to these events. Interpretations of the sightings can vary widely among different religious and political groups, potentially influencing interfaith relations and socio-political discourse. The convergence of religious prophecy and political reality in Jerusalem creates a unique and volatile context where celestial phenomena are not merely seen as isolated events, but as integral parts of a larger narrative that encompasses faith, identity, and power. Angel Appearances in Jerusalem Mystical Encounters and Their Impact Jerusalem has long been a focal point for mystical experiences and divine encounters. Among the most captivating of these are reported sightings of angels, which have profoundly impacted both individual believers and the broader religious community. These angelic appearances, often described in awe-inspiring terms, evoke a deep sense of wonder and spiritual awakening, prompting reflection on the divine and its manifestations in the modern world. Angels hold a central place in the religious narratives of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, all of which have deep roots in Jerusalem. In the Hebrew Bible, angels are messengers of God, appearing to figures like Abraham, Jacob, and Moses, providing guidance, protection, and revelation. Christianity builds on this tradition, with the New Testament recounting angelic visits to figures such as Mary, Joseph, and the shepherds at Jesus' birth. In Islam, angels are also pivotal, with the Quran describing encounters between the Prophet Muhammad and the angel Gabriel. Jerusalem's unique position as a holy city for these three religions amplifies the significance of any reported angelic sightings. The city's ancient streets, sacred sites, and historical resonance create a setting where divine encounters seem particularly plausible to the faithful. In recent years, reports of angelic appearances in Jerusalem have captured public attention. Witnesses describe seeing luminous beings with human-like forms, often surrounded by an ethereal glow. 
These sightings are frequently accompanied by a profound sense of peace and spiritual reassurance. Such reports are shared widely via social media, amplifying their reach and impact. One notable instance occurred near the Western Wall, where several individuals reported seeing a radiant figure during prayer. This sighting quickly spread across social networks, with many interpreting it, interpreting it as a sign of divine favor and a call to deeper faith. Similarly, during religious festivals and significant communal events, reports of angelic visions often emerge, adding layers of meaning to these already spiritually charged occasions. The perception of angelic beings can be influenced by psychological factors such as expectation, stress, and heightened emotional states. Jerusalem, with its intense religious and cultural atmosphere, can prime individuals to experience and interpret unusual occurrences as divine phenomena. This phenomenon is supported by psychological concepts like pareidolia, where the human brain recognizes familiar patterns, such as faces or figures, in random stimuli. The anticipation of divine encounters is embedded in the collective consciousness of those who frequent Jerusalem. Pilgrims and residents alike may be more attuned to perceiving and reporting angelic sightings, viewing them as affirmations of their faith and spiritual significance. Angelic sightings in Jerusalem are interpreted in various ways depending on one's religious tradition. In Judaism, such encounters might be seen as reminders of God's ongoing presence and care for His people. Christians might view these appearances as signs of God's intervention and a reaffirmation of biblical prophecies. For Muslims, an angelic sighting could be perceived as a blessing and a call to righteousness and devotion. These interpretations often reinforce existing beliefs and inspire increased religious observance. Sermons, religious teachings, and community discussions may focus on these sightings, using them as touchstones for spiritual growth and reflection. While many embrace the idea of angelic encounters, skeptics offer alternative explanations. Some argue that these sightings could be attributed to natural phenomena such as atmospheric conditions, reflections, or optical illusions. Others suggest that psychological factors including stress, fatigue, or group dynamics might lead to collective visions or shared experiences of divine beings. Technological factors also play a role in contemporary reports. Drones, holograms, and other advanced imaging technologies can create convincing illusions of angelic figures, especially in a city as densely populated and technologically savvy as Jerusalem. Regardless of their origins, reports of angelic appearances have a tangible impact on individuals and communities. For many, these encounters serve as powerful affirmations of faith, providing comfort and a sense of connection to the divine. They inspire stories, art, and communal practices, enriching the cultural and spiritual tapestry of Jerusalem. Communities often rally around these experiences, using them to foster unity and shared purpose. Religious leaders may incorporate these stories into their teachings, emphasizing themes of hope, divine presence, and the importance of maintaining faith in uncertain times. Angelic appearances in Jerusalem continue to captivate and inspire, reflecting the enduring power of this ancient city's spiritual heritage. Whether viewed as divine interventions, psychological phenomena, or a blend of both, these sightings speak to a deep human need for connection with the sacred. As reports of such encounters persist, they remind us of the profound ways in which faith, culture, and perception intertwine, shaping our understanding of the divine and its place in our world. One of the most concrete proofs of the presence of angels in the Holy Land is the appearance of the Archangel Michael. Throughout history, the country of Israel has faced conflicts and wars. 
The people here believe that they have been protected by the Archangel to have a peaceful life like today. Archangel Michael, one of the most revered figures in the angelic hierarchy, holds a profound significance in Jerusalem, a city that is a cornerstone of faith for Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Michael is traditionally seen as a divine protector, warrior, and messenger, and his association with Jerusalem underscores the city's spiritual importance and its role as a focal point of divine encounters and eschatological events. The significance of Archangel Michael in Jerusalem is woven into the fabric of religious history, theology, and cultural traditions of these three Abrahamic faiths. In Jewish tradition, Michael is considered the guardian angel of Israel and the protector of the Jewish people. The Hebrew Bible, particularly the book of Daniel, highlights Michael's role in defending Israel against its enemies. Daniel 12, 1 states, At that time Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will arise. There will be a time of distress such as has not happened from the beginning of nations until then. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. This passage emphasizes Michael's protective role during times of great tribulation. Jerusalem, as the spiritual and historical heart of the Jewish people, is seen as being under Michael's special protection. The city's long history of sieges, destructions, and exiles has often been viewed through a lens of divine testing and safeguarding. Michael's association with Jerusalem reinforces the city's sanctity and the belief in divine guardianship over its destiny. In Christianity, Michael's significance is expanded, particularly within the context of apocalyptic literature and the final battle between good and evil. The New Testament, specifically the Book of Revelation, describes Michael as the leader of the heavenly armies, who defeats Satan and his followers. Revelation 12, 7, 9 states, Then war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. For Christians, Michael symbolizes the ultimate victory of divine justice and the triumph of God's kingdom. Jerusalem, central to the life of Jesus and early Christianity, is seen as a significant site where eschatological events will unfold. Michael's connection to Jerusalem is thus imbued with themes of divine intervention, judgment, and salvation. Pilgrims and believers view Jerusalem as a place where Michael's protective and triumphant role will be most evident, particularly in the end times. And in Islam, Michael is one of the four archangels, tasked with providing nourishment for bodies and souls and overseeing natural phenomena. Although Michael's role in Islamic tradition is not as directly linked to specific locations as in Judaism and Christianity, his presence is nonetheless significant. Jerusalem is highly revered in Islam, particularly due to the Prophet Muhammad's night journey and ascension, which involved encounters with various prophets and angels. While Michael's direct association with Jerusalem is less pronounced in Islamic texts, the city's sacred status as a place of divine revelation and angelic presence underscores the broader Islamic reverence for Michael's role in the divine order. His duty to nurture and protect aligns with the spiritual importance of Jerusalem as a place of prayer, reflection, and divine encounters. Jerusalem has been a focal point of divine encounters and supernatural events throughout history. The appearance of Archangel Michael in Jerusalem is not just a matter of religious doctrine, but part of the city's living spiritual heritage. Historical accounts, folklore, and contemporary reports often depict Michael as intervening during moments of crisis or significant religious observance. These stories, whether recorded in ancient texts or shared through modern media, reinforce the belief in Michael's ongoing guardianship. 
During the medieval period, Christian crusaders often invoked Michael's protection as they embarked on their pilgrimages to Jerusalem. Similarly, Jewish mystics and scholars in medieval Jerusalem meditated on Michael's protective presence, seeking his intercession in times of peril. In modern times, reports of angelic apparitions, including those attributed to Michael, continue to inspire and reassure the faithful, suggesting a continuity of belief that spans centuries. Michael's association with Jerusalem encompasses themes of divine justice, protection, and cosmic warfare. His presence is a reminder of the ongoing spiritual struggle between good and evil, with Jerusalem as a central battleground. For believers, Michael's intervention is a sign of God's active engagement in the world, particularly in safeguarding and guiding the faithful. In Christian eschatology, Michael's victory over Satan is often interpreted as a precursor to the establishment of God's kingdom on earth, with Jerusalem at its heart. This eschatological vision aligns with Jewish messianic expectations, where Michael's protection ensures the survival and ultimate redemption of Israel. The significance of Archangel Michael in Jerusalem is a multifaceted tapestry woven from historical, theological, and cultural threads. As a protector, warrior, and heavenly messenger, Michael's connection to this sacred city underscores its role as a divine epicenter for Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Whether through ancient scriptures, historical accounts, or modern-day sightings, Michael's presence in Jerusalem continues to inspire faith, provide comfort, and affirm the city's enduring spiritual importance. Angels are not merely abstract concepts. They are real spiritual beings endowed with intelligence, emotions, and will. Although they do not possess physical bodies like humans, they can assume physical forms when necessary. Despite their profound wisdom, angels do not possess omniscience like God. They were created as higher beings than humans and have been observing humanity for a long time, gaining knowledge through direct observation rather than through books. This first-hand experience grants them a unique perspective on events as they unfold in accordance with God's plan. This makes angels distinct from humans as they understand God's overarching design in a way we cannot. Due to their prolonged observation of human behavior, they can predict our actions with considerable accuracy. Their insights stem from direct observation, not from second-hand accounts. Although angels have their own wills, they adhere strictly to God's commands. Good angels, sent by God to aid believers, are fundamentally different from humans. Contrary to some beliefs, humans do not transform into angels after death, nor were angels ever human. They are a unique creation of God. The Bible describes angels as magnificent beings, such as Gabriel in Daniel's vision, who had a face shining like lightning and eyes like flaming torches. Even the angel at Christ's tomb appeared with a radiant countenance. These biblical accounts affirm that angels are real, not mere fabrications. While angel sightings were rare in ancient times, contemporary interest in them has surged. Many people report encounters with angels, often describing them as mysterious strangers who bring peace and comfort. Angels are sometimes perceived as winged beings or figures in white robes, leaving witnesses with a profound sense of connection to the divine. These encounters highlight the significant roles angels play in various faiths, capturing the imagination and interest of people. Those who witness angelic visitations often come away with a deepened sense of God's existence and a profound peace. Despite the enigmatic nature of these experiences, they forge a strong connection to the divine, similar to the angelic choir that heralded Jesus' birth in Luke 2.13. Some individuals even report feeling surrounded by 
angelic choirs in places of worship, which, although they may not convey specific messages, evoke spiritual joy and comfort, enhancing the sense of the sacred. Another common type of angelic visitation involves physical sensations, such as feeling embraced by gentle wings or arms. This is especially comforting for elderly individuals who may feel lonely. These experiences underscore God's role as the ultimate source of comfort, echoing scriptural references to God's protective wings. Such encounters illustrate that God and angels are actively present in our world, strengthening believers' faith in divine assistance and the comforting presence of heavenly beings. When people experience these angelic encounters, it feels like a special moment where they deeply sense God's presence, filling them with an indescribable peace. Even though these experiences can be mysterious and hard to fully comprehend, they make people feel connected to something truly significant and divine, much like the angel's song at Jesus' birth. Some individuals even feel surrounded by angelic choirs in worship settings, bringing immense joy and peace. Angels also visit us by providing a sense of being gently hugged, as if wrapped in soft wings or arms. This sensation is particularly reassuring for older adults who might feel lonely. Such experiences remind us that God is always there, protecting us like a comforting wing, and that angels are watching over us in our daily lives. These moments help us believe in God's assistance and feel the comforting presence of heavenly beings around us. Encounters with angels serve as poignant reminders of God's comforting presence, offering solace in times of need and prompting us to appreciate the care and protection of God's angels. However, it is crucial to remain vigilant and discerning, as scriptures warn about fallen angels aligned with Satan who seek to harm and deceive God's people. This underscores the importance of spiritual discernment and awareness of spiritual deception. Despite these challenges, we find reassurance in Jesus' promise of enduring presence and protection, which surpasses even the comfort provided by angels. As we navigate life's uncertainties, we can take comfort in knowing that Jesus is always by our side, guiding and protecting us in every situation. Biblical prophecy, as conveyed by Jesus and the Apostle John, illuminates the supernatural signs that will signal the culmination of the end times. These signs, such as the darkening of the sun, falling stars, and celestial disturbances, serve as divine warnings of God's ultimate plan for redemption and judgment. The imagery depicted in the sixth seal of Revelation paints a vivid picture of impending divine wrath, with catastrophic events like massive earthquakes and the darkening of celestial bodies. In times of fear and uncertainty, people from all walks of life, from kings to slaves, seek refuge, hoping to escape the divine punishment looming over the earth. Throughout history, humans have been captivated by celestial events, often interpreting them as messages from a higher power. While eclipses and comets were once feared as omens, modern science has provided explanations for these phenomena. However, in today's world, where we have unraveled the mysteries of the skies and can predict astronomical events with precision, the fulfillment of biblical prophecies might require something truly extraordinary to capture our attention. Consider Christ's predictions of spectacular celestial displays. These could serve as the unmistakable signs we've been awaiting, signaling divine intervention and the nearing of Judgment Day. When Jesus spoke of these supernatural signs in the sky, he drew upon a rich tapestry of prophecies from the Old Testament. The imagery he invoked, of the sun darkening, stars falling, and heavens shaking, was deeply rooted in prophetic literature. These recurring themes of cataclysmic events are all connected to what's called the Day of the Lord. 
Take Isaiah, for instance. He vividly describes a day when human arrogance will be brought low, leaving only God standing tall. These prophecies aren't just about doom and gloom, they're warnings about the dangers of pride and the importance of humility before our Creator. Let's face it, human pride can be a stubborn obstacle when it comes to connecting with God. Sometimes it takes a major shake-up to wake us from our self-centered slumber. That's where divine intervention comes in. By shaking the very foundations of our world, God reminds us of our vulnerability and our need to humble ourselves before Him. So, when you witness the heavens trembling and the earth shaking, don't just brush it off as a cosmic coincidence. Take it as a cue to refocus your gaze and realign your priorities. Because in the end, it's all about recognizing our place in the grand scheme of things and acknowledging the power and majesty of the One who holds it all together. Amid the chaos and unusual signs in the sky, people will come to realize the futility of their pursuits and obsessions. And this doesn't just refer to traditional idols like statues, but also to the modern-day idols we chase after, like wealth, fame, and material possessions. The Apostle Paul foresaw this, likening our modern fixation on materialism and indulgence to the idol worship condemned in the Bible. When the upheaval hits, it will reveal the emptiness of accumulating possessions for their own sake. Isaiah vividly describes what will happen on Judgment Day. The sky will darken, and even the stars and moon will lose their brilliance. It's as if the universe itself is preparing for a grand reckoning. Ezekiel adds to this by describing more signs in the sky, more darkness and gloom, all consequences of human arrogance and sin. These cosmic events are meant to jolt us awake, serving as God's way of saying, hey, stop chasing after all these material things. It's a wake-up call to reassess our priorities and recognize the transient nature of worldly pursuits in the face of divine judgment. So, in the chaos, we're called to reflect on what truly matters. Instead of being consumed by the pursuit of temporary pleasures, we're encouraged to seek spiritual fulfillment and a deeper connection with the divine. These cosmic upheavals remind us of our vulnerability and the limitations of our earthly existence. They urge us to shift our focus from the transient to the eternal and to find solace in a higher purpose beyond material wealth and earthly desires. In the Bible, darkness is not just an ancient story. It's a powerful symbol of God shaking things up to grab our attention. These celestial signs, such as the darkening of the sun and moon, serve as a wake-up call, preparing us for the return of Jesus and the establishment of His kingdom. God wants us to recognize our sins, whether it's pride, greed, or placing material things above Him, so we can turn around and reconcile with Him. While the thought of God's anger may seem daunting, it is part of His plan to set things right and demonstrate His love and justice simultaneously. Jesus himself compared our times to the days of Noah, when people were consumed by wickedness and ignored warnings. Ultimately, when God had had enough, he sent a flood to cleanse the world. God doesn't delight in our suffering. He can't bear to see us harm ourselves any longer. When chaos unfolds around us, it's a signal to pause and reflect on what truly holds significance. God is trying to communicate with us, even if it means disrupting the status quo. In the book of Revelation, a remarkable scene unfolds as the Lamb breaks the first of seven seals. The world seems to hold its breath, awaiting the next moment. The souls of martyrs cry out for justice, pleading against the injustices and oppressions rampant on earth. God's anger, though just, is tempered with love and truth. His judgment springs from a deep desire to confront the corruption and moral decay plaguing humanity. In Matthew 24, 37, 
39, Jesus draws a poignant comparison to the days of Noah. It was a time of immense wickedness, with humanity sinking deeper into corruption and evil with each passing day. As God surveyed the world, his heart weighed heavy with sadness at the extent of human depravity. Despite numerous warnings and signs, people remained oblivious to the impending judgment. Witnessing humanity's relentless spiral into sin, God's heart brimmed with sorrow and regret for having created mankind. The catastrophic flood served as a response to humanity's unrepentant wickedness, a stark reminder of the consequences of rebellion against God. As our Creator and Father, God grieves to see His children on the path of self-destruction. Yet, even amid these solemn truths, there is a message of hope. God's judgment is not born out of vindictiveness, but stems from a deep desire to bring about redemption and restoration. Through His love and grace, He extends the opportunity for repentance and reconciliation, urging us to turn away from sin and return to Him. As we navigate the deep seas of life, let us heed the signs around us and realign our hearts with God's will. Let us recognize the urgency of the moment and embrace the opportunity for renewal and transformation. By acknowledging our faults and seeking forgiveness, we open the door to a future filled with hope, guided by the love and mercy of our Heavenly Father. There are moments when God's sorrow transforms into righteous anger, compelling Him to take decisive action. His love, though powerful, demands tough love when necessary. Throughout history, we have witnessed instances of God's tough love in action, such as the flood during Noah's time and the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. These events underscore God's unwavering commitment to addressing sin and evil through necessary measures. Sin, inherently opposed to God's nature, has wrought immense suffering and evil upon the world. Therefore, God's actions aim to counter these consequences and guide humanity back to righteousness. The eradication of sin is crucial for the establishment of God's kingdom, where true peace and happiness reign and all traces of sorrow and suffering are comforted. The urgency of watching and remaining faithful, as emphasized in Revelation 16, highlights the importance of vigilance and faithfulness. The impending seven plagues before Christ's second coming demand that believers remain vigilant and uphold spiritual integrity symbolized by faithful garments. The metaphor of Christ coming as a thief underscores the unexpected nature of these events, urging readiness. Though God's interventions may seem stern, they aim to usher in a sin-free kingdom where His ways prevail. The call to watch and remain faithful serves as a beacon of hope, signaling the eventual establishment of a kingdom characterized by genuine peace and eternal joy. In Revelation, those who remain spiritually faithful are depicted as adorned in white robes, symbolizing purity through the cleansing power of Jesus Christ's blood. This imagery underscores the importance of maintaining spiritual vigilance amidst the tumultuous events of the end times. When Christ speaks of being blessed for watching, Revelation 16.15 says, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he who watches. This reminder encourages believers to remain steadfast in their faith and vigilant in their spiritual journey, knowing that their perseverance will ultimately lead to blessings and eternal reward. Staying watchful and keeping our spiritual garments signifies more than just observing celestial signs. It involves being aware of global events and guarding against religious deception. Angels play a significant role in Christ's return, as foretold in Scripture. 
According to Matthew 25, 31, when the Son of Man returns in glory, he will be accompanied by all the angels. This signifies not only their presence, but also their active participation in this momentous event. For devout believers, the return of Jesus Christ holds the promise of ultimate fulfillment and divine reunion. As the moment approaches, believers are urged to remain vigilant, adorned with the garments of spiritual loyalty and prepared for His imminent arrival. In Revelation 5, a heavenly scene unfolds vividly, with angels encircling the throne of the Lamb, Jesus Christ, engaging in perpetual worship. Their united chorus proclaims, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain, affirming His supremacy and offering Him honor, glory, and blessing. This unwavering devotion serves as a testament to their steadfast commitment to Jesus Christ, the central figure of their affection. James 4.14 reminds us of the fleeting nature of human life, likening it to a vapor that appears briefly and then vanishes. This verse underscores the importance of being spiritually prepared and living each moment with purpose and intentionality, knowing that our time on earth is limited. While we often find ourselves engrossed in the pursuits of this world, chasing after success, wealth, and relationships, angels perceive the profound depth of Christ's divine plan. They don't succumb to the allure of temporary pleasures or distractions, but instead devote themselves wholeheartedly to Christ, acknowledging Him as the central figure of all creation. In contrast, we humans tend to elevate transient things to the status of idols, pouring our time, energy, and affection into pursuits that ultimately fade away. Yet, true worship entails recognizing Christ's supreme authority and embracing His gift of redemption. It means relinquishing our attachment to worldly desires and aligning our lives with His divine purpose. To authentically worship Christ is to surrender our will to His, echoing the sentiment of, not my will, but yours be done. Like the heavenly choir, whose harmonious praises resound throughout eternity, let us dedicate ourselves to Christ's service, offering our lives as a living sacrifice. In doing so, we acknowledge His sovereignty and honor Him with our obedience. So as we join our voices with the celestial chorus in adoration, let us joyfully proclaim, O come, let us adore Him, Christ the Lord, committing ourselves wholeheartedly to His divine will and eternal glory.